Good morning, dear colleagues. Shall we suggest the use of terrace classification when it comes to stratification in Russia? You know that um, classification based on uh, malignancy uh, of thyroid gland um, stratification was offered by Eleonora Horvath. Uh, in 2009, and then a big group of uh, researchers wanted to improve this classification and make it uh, more practical. They used big uh, attributes or features like um, uh, 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 hyper uh, echo, uh, echogenicity, um, vertical um, location, uh, uh, irregular outline, uh, uh, turbers, uh, microlobular, and microcalcinations. So uh, it is the, the we are not going to differentiate between uh, psenomic uh, uh, bodies uh, and uh, microcalcinations. In Russia, in um, some uh, institutions, uh, quack uh, or uh, a Quo 2013 classification based on these uh, big uh, features. The next um, following stage of research show that we must be guided not only by big attributes, their specificity is above 95%, but there are additional criteria with the specificity of uh, over 90% that shall be considered. And here we see the moderate reduction is uh, uh, echoacity, uh, hyper echoacic um, inclusions, uh, bolt shape, uh, macrocalcinations. In 2017, two classifications were published the Unified European Thyroid Association Guidelines and the updated uh, American Thyroid Imaging Classification. In these two documents, uh, these additional minor attributes are used. A big group of experts worked um, in Russia for six years uh, from our ultrasound uh, and functional diagnostic associations, uh, over 40 cities, uh, major institutions, research institutions, universities and clinics and hospitals. We started uh, by reviewing the assessment criteria and identify, identifying the, was, the ones uh, to guide the thyroid gland uh, TG assessment. So the parameters uh, for uh, foci lesions uh, in TG. In B mode, uh, localization size, uh, spatial location, if previously we applied this attribute only to mammary glands, but now uh, we use it uh, for TG, the way they're positioned in space. Outline uh, limits halo, especially the halo sickness, echogenicity. Uh, we always use uh, color coding methodologies. Now it's the standard in our profession, and we're going to look at the vascular pattern. In the use of new technologies, of course, we must use them. But uh, consider that every new technology requires uh, a very deep study. Most often, uh, we currently elastography is used. And the next speaker will present new uh, techniques and methods, including elastography, I hope. Based on all these parameters, uh, we run the ultrasound uh, interpretation, uh, providing indications for biopsy. If uh, a um, TG node is identified, shall it be punctured or not? The answer is no. If uh, we, are there, we are positive that there is no cancer, it's benign, but puncture if you are 100% sure it is cancer. However, ambivalent nodes uh, is the majority identified um, you know, during ultrasound, and they subdivide into two parts. First, uh, we are 
positive, it's benign, but it's better to be safe and follow up the patient. Um, the other case, uh, we do not like uh, the node. Uh, we prefer to punctuate, though there are no very evident cancer attributes. TRAS T, no cancer. TRAS 3, observation, follow-up. TRAS 5, yes, for cancer. TRAS 4, puncture. The uh, TRAS scale in a different presentation. The second category for benign nodes. Uh, we do not puncture them. Exclamation mark. These are mostly colloid nodes. First type, it's not a node, it's a cyst um, that expanded the follicular or it's a macro follicular. The second type are so called spongy nodes with uh, multi cavities divided uh, by thin membranes. And if you press, then the sponge. Um, would um, emit liquid. We do not punct puncture. Dubious or ambivalent nodes are in TRADS 3 and 4 categories. Currently, the leading strategy uh, for the diagnostic criteria and, and the TG assessment for nodes is uh, uh, Echogenicity, hyper echoic, uh, iso echoic, and these two types are not to be punctured. We do not take biopsy because they are uh, in TRADS 3 category and to be regularly monitored. When it comes to hyper, uh, um, hyper echo echoic uh, group. Uh, we subdivide them uh, to moderately reduced, uh, significantly reduced, uh, reduced, um, and evenly reduced, and uh, hyper-echoic inclusions. All, um, all these uh, hyper, uh, hypo-echogenic are to be punctured. So echogenicity is the leading attribute and reduced echogenicity is a way for us to find candidates for biopsy if it's a reduced echogenicity T5 must be punctured it's a leading indicator for cancer a moderately reduced echogenicity we identify nodes for puncture having calcinations Microcalcinations, it's a big attribute to classify a node in T5. Macrocalcinations, including plus other minor attributes, it's a T4 category. Vertical alignment for the node, it's not parallel. It's a major feature for malignancy. Therefore, node is uh, stratified into T5 and punctured. The spatial location of a node has to be defined uh, at the cross-section or transversal scan. Round shape or undetermined shape is uh, the small um, or oh, oh, minor sign, and um, it's T4 category for puncturing. Uh, irregular, uh, specular shape, uh, star shape, uh, it's a big, uh, a major sign for um, malignancy, T5 category. T4, these are unevenly thickened halo nodes, uh, T4. Acoustic effects, they are clearly visible behind calcinations, and uh, they do happen um, in TG. We already discussed it. Uh, they can be micro, uh, calcinations can be micro and uh, uh, macro. There are shadows behind them. 
but uh, shadows may be not always behind the uh, calcinations, but behind uh, the node itself because it's very uh, denser and therefore it dampers ultrasound waves. There are no acoustic acoustic shadows behind benign nodes. Therefore, when we see nodes with uh, acoustic uh, shade, shadows, then it's a small, uh, a minor feature for cancer. Uh, category 44 includes uh, all uh, hard or high um, rigidity nodes, and they must be punctured. Similarly uh, to lymphatic nodes, where the elastographic research shows that the tissue has a pretty high rigidity. We're moving on to the assessment using the vascular pattern. We face an important question, whether it's hypervascularization uh, or uh, uh, hi hypervascularization. It's not the leading feature. We look uh, for the irregularities, uh, wavy, branchy, cut, uh, chaotic uh, vessels. That's the key. We take this feature as a minor indicator. And then, including other minor features, we will select the node for biopsy in category 4. B9 nodes are not characterized usually by pathological vascular patterns. These additional minor features, what do they give us? At least almost half of TG cancers would have two and more major malignancy attributes and this is, we have no doubts in differential diagnostics for these do nodes. 10% of um, cancer nodes will have uh, one major feature for malignancy and they are very well identified in ultrasound. A quarter of um, malignant uh, nodes will have uh, a big uh, at one big, ma big major feature and small features, but 12% of cancer nodes uh, are characterized only by minor features. Uh, these cancers mask themselves uh, as benign. Uh, Medulla cancers uh, very often fall in this, into this group, and therefore, using a uh, small or minor features, we can select these nodes uh, into tyrads four for puncture biopsy. Um, a different arrangement of uh, tyrads using ultrasound features. Tyrads two, none major or minor features of these are colloid nodes. Uh, tyrads uh, three, none major or minor, uh, isoechogenic and hyperechoic. Tyrads uh, four, there are minor features and all uh, hypoechoic. Uh, Nodes fall into here. Tarads uh, five, uh, at least one major feature for malignancy identifies node into this category. Tarads uh, five, that's a high risk of malignancy. Tarad six, it's a confirmed uh, malignancy node, malignant node, and the patient is prepared for the appropriate treatment. Minor features are listed, moderate hypoechogenity, uh, route shape, microcalcinations, uh, irregular thickness of halo, uh, plus uh, high rigidity according to elastography and uh, pathological vascular pattern. All together, it grades the node into minor, uh, uh, into TRADS4. Big features, the clear hyperechogenicity, microcalcinations, vertical orientation, uh, turbers, uh, and uh, radiation, radiation uh, outlines. Uh, according to this, with these minor features uh, and having at least uh, one uh, big uh, feature, major feature, it cl classifies the node into Tourette's 5. We can also consider now the sizes of uh, nodes. In tyrides 2, it's uh, cystic solid 
node, if it grows b above two centimeters, it must be considered for biopsy. And therefore, uh, downgraded into TRADS4. Third category in TRADS, uh, if uh, above 1.5 centimeters, the node is moved into category TRADS4 uh, for puncture. In hyper-echoic -echo nodes above 1 centimeter, all nodes uh, ought to be um, biopsied. As we said, uh, uh, if there is at least one major malignancy sign above one centimeter must be punctured. If it, the size is below one centimeter but the patient is in the risk group, then biopsy is required. Or the node is below one centimeter, there are major features for malignancy plus um, signs of metastatic affection of uh, 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 lymphatic nodes, then this node and other nodes must uh, uh, be moved to biopsy. And if it's below this size, then it must be observed. Uh, risk group. What are these people? Patients with uh, the family history of uh, thyroid gland cancer. Patients uh, irradiated in terms of head and neck, patients with permanent dysphagia and dysphonia, patients with limited movement of vocal cords, those who had PET and nodes in, TG, in, in their TJs were identified with uh, metabolic activity patients younger than 20 age patients uh, with uh, increased levels of basal and stimulated uh, calcitonin patients who had uh, TG cancer surgery uh, or if they have metastatic lesion in regional uh, nodes uh, on on the neck TRADS classification scale offers recommendations and guidelines uh, for patients. Uh, uh, group 2, uh, it's uh, planned um, examinations once every two years, but for the risk group, it's more often once every year. Category 3, dynamic uh, ultrasound investigations annually once. Uh, if uh, the dynamics is negative, uh, the uh, then um, the node is moved into T4 for puncture, uh, TRADS4. If uh, the uh, result is uh, negative or non-informative, uh, the um, biopsy is to be repeated uh, after three to four months in the uh, after a small period. If uh, the twice um, uh, biopsy, uh, um, excuse me. Uh, if the ne result was negative or non-informative, then ultrasound is to be done after two or three months. With a high suspicion uh, for cancer, uh, the nodes uh, may require to have a biopsy twice or even higher to get uh, the adequate morphological conclusion. What to do next with these patients in this group? Uh, pay attention to what I'm saying, must be taken by the clinician. If there are suspicion lymphatic neck nodes, um, then they must be um, put for diopsy, biopsy. Uh, TRADS5 allows us to compartmentalize how we understand these nodes and select suspicion nodes in a thyroid gland for the fourth and fifth category.
First of all, for the ultrasound experts, primary ones, and while the final assessment and the decision making on biopsy is made by the clinician endocrinologist or oncologist or the expert who is dealing with these uh, patients. Uh, of course, the first uh, basis uh, for decision making is uh, the ultrasound conclusion. But he also has the level of hormones of this patient, the presence or absence of antibodies. He knows the family history, the life history, and the uh, final conclusion is made by the clinician. Well, in conclusion, I'd like to tell you the following. In this presentation, I've used the materials from the recently published um, guideline for thyroid usage for assessment of malignancy of thyroid nodes. It's uh, made by a big team of authors from different cities of Russia. Uh, these are the experts that headed the uh, groups um, that uh, worked on thyroid classification in the guidelines. And we explain how to how correctly and in a logical way use this classification. And I hope we shall start using it more actively in our practice um, and uh, uh, shall use a single algorithm in our work. Thank you very much now for your attention and I wish you good health.